Well, give me a team and a good lead dog and a sled that's built so fine. And let me race those miles to know 1049. Then when I get back to my home, hey, I can tell my tale. I did, I did, I did, the yeah, I did a right trail. Well, I recently posted a video that was quite long that uh, detailed keeping the snow and ice off the airplane during the winter and using different preheat methods to preheat or keep your airplane warm. Now this is going to be a shorter video that just details my specific preheat system that I use. Okay, so my primary heat source consists of a reef system, an engineered preheat system that's installed on the engine. So normally that would be plugged into 110 volt AC uh, when that power is available. I also use a Honda EU2000 generator to uh, power that system when I'm in remote locations. There's a couple of issues with using the generator. It's a one gallon tank and with uh, any kind of a load you only have maybe four to six hours of operation. So four to six hours of operation if I add a, another one gallon gravity feed tank now I've got something that's going to you know, operate through the night and keep the airplane warm. This can be used uh, remotely to preheat it or it can be used remotely to keep the engine warm if you're flying on uh, consecutive days like we do on Iditarod. Uh, it's best to keep the engine warm. Once the engine gets cold soaked, that's when things start not working correctly. Solenoids start getting glitchy and batteries get cold and don't perform. So we always prefer to keep our airplanes uh, heated when we're operating in consecutive days. So this is my preheat system that, uh, that I use. Normally it's just plugged in to electrical power. If I don't have electrical power, I have the generator. And this system has an installed in the old DC power receptacle. The uh, electrical components are wired in, so this is wired into the TANIS system. Ox tank that I plumbed in, gravity feed, and I've got it bungee to the strut step, so this is actually quite secure. The reef preheat system draws about 500 watts. This will carry 500 watts for probably six, eight hours. With the additional one gallon uh, gravity fed tank, now I know that this Honda generator will easily run through the night. Uh, a couple hours before I fly, I've got a 500 watt heater under uh, on the floor to provide a little heat up into the instruments and I can plug this in for the last hour. Then I'm drawing a thousand watts, so that's quite a load on this generator, and I don't need this plugged in all night. This just needs to warm the in instruments uh, prior to flight. So that's my primary preheat system uh, with an installed uh, reef system on the engine. Uh, I always carry with me as a backup the Northern Companion. The Northern Companion I can use to preheat the aircraft, and I can uh, also carry a small catalytic heater that I can put inside the engine to keep the engine warm if my, if my generator fails. So when you're out in remote areas, it's, it's wise to have several preheat options. Uh, you get stuck and you're really stuck. Here's a good look at the inside of the, uh, the Honda engine. Well, you can see first off I've got an extra spark plug. Here's my DC power cable that I kind of keep inside the cover. And here's the engine breather. This is the other problem we have with these Hondas operating in sub-zero temperatures. Uh, the moisture from the crankcase that gets pulled into the, uh, into the intake system, it pulls the crankcase fumes and moisture, which ex extends the life of the engine, and it burns it through the combustion, which is an environmentally friendly way to dispose of those gases. Well, this breather with cold air circulating through this engine compartment may freeze, and it will freeze when you're down, you know, in sub-zero temperatures. So if you have one of these and the engine's quitting on you, well, the easiest way to take care of that and a short-term fix is you remove the, remove the breather, and now the breather is removed. What I would do is wad up a paper towel and lay a paper towel in here because your crankcase vent is totally open now, and you're going to get fumes and oil vapor out of there, but the engine will run and you can uh, operate it and get your airplane preheated and get home. So you can see it's running just fine. 
but I stress that this is just a, a short-term temporary fix. What you really need to do is you really need to install a winter kit. And this is the winter kit for the, the Honda generator. This plugs into the crankcase. This plugs into the intake manifold. And this is a little heater that plugs into the electrical uh, panel up in the, uh, up in the face of the, the generator. And with this installed, there is actually a little heater element that heats the breather, keeps it from freezing, and mitigates that, that uh, losing your generator, having your generator fail on you uh, during the winter. So, $93 at Alaska Mining and Diving, and you can install this winter kit very easily on the generator. It just plugs in. Uh, you follow the directions for installing the wiring on the electrical panel and plugs together and a few wire ties to uh, tie everything off. And then you actually also add a little insulating. And here is the completed installation on the winterization kit on the Honda generator. I'm going to add some wire ties around here and here to, to keep that secured. But this is what you get. You've got a heated breather line that mitigates the problem of the uh, breather freezing at sub-zero temperatures. Install the uh, cover and you're good to go. Well I outlined my primary preheat system which is an interior system, an installed engineered preheat system that's uh, 500 watts. But of course you need electrical power, 110 volts AC, either plugged in or via portable generator, which I outlined the generator use and how to mitigate some of the problems. My primary outside preheat source is the Northern Companion. This is a Northern Companion setup and you bring the scat tubing up into a cow flap and of course the engine cover is not on right now and this will preheat the engine in a couple hours uh, three I would say two hours if the engine isn't too cold soaked, if you've got a super cold soaked engine, you might want to give it up to three hours uh, to make sure the core of the engine is nice and warm. So this is my primary outside preheat system. If I'm operating in remote areas and I don't have my generator with me or if the generator has failed, ideally I do not want to let my engine get cold soaked. So I carry a catalytic converter. This is a small survival cat on a propane bottle. If you put this into a warm engine, this will work just fine and this will help keep your engine warm enough so that in the morning you still have uh, sufficient warmth to safely start your engine. Once this is started, this is not so hot that I can't hold on to it with a glove. And put it down into the engine compartment. So this is my backup to keep the engine warm if my generator is not working or if I have not brought my generator uh, out on the trail. Well, to recap my preheat system, I guess you could say this warm hanger is my primary preheat uh, method. But I have two systems that I use, an interior engineered and installed uh, reef preheat system, 500 watts that will preheat the engine in a few hours, but we need AC power either an AC plug-in uh, remotely or an AC generator. And I've got an extended tank that enables this to run all night. And this will be good to keep the airplane warm all night or preheat if, if the need be. Uh, if I'm out remotely and I forget the generator or the generators fail, my outside preheat system that will preheat the engine, uh, a cold soaked engine in a few hours, is the Northern Companion. It's very efficient. Uh, it uses an MSR stove. I always prefer not to let the engine get cold. That's always best. So I've got the Survival Cat propane catalytic heater that runs on a, a small uh, canister of propane. The drawback is you have to put that in a warm engine, otherwise the propane regulator will freeze and it'll quit. And if it does quit and the engine does get cold soaked, I've got the Northern Companion to preheat the aircraft. Uh, well, that's it. I hope it gives you some insight on how I keep my airplane preheated and warm and trouble-free in the winter. So 
there's the EU 2000 and I've got it hooked up to two gallon jury jug this will run all night this should run about 12 hours and keep the airplane warm through the night especially in sub-zero conditions we never want to let the engine get cold so it causes too many problems way up in Alaska the state that stands alone there's a dog race run from Anchorage in the Nome and it's a grueling race with a lightning pace with the chilly winds do wail beneath the northern lights cross snow and the ice that's called the Iditarod Trail We'll give me a team and a good lead dog and a sled that's built so fine And let me race those miles to know 1049 Then when I get back to my home, hey, I can tell my tale I did, I did